achieved. What is up, everybody, and welcome to Studio Day Hefre, Day Quarantine, where you'll have to forgive me if my gum gets annoying because I'm going to be chewing gum probably all day. I'm going for it again. Day one, nicotine patch. Look at those no muscles. Uh, anyway, it's day one of the nicotine patch. Freaking out. A uh, couple of really cool things in the NFL, though, have happened today. Well, one cool thing in the NFL, and then one cool thing that somebody sent me that they wanted to see me do. So we'll handle those two things. So this ESPN.com did a redraft of the entire NFL. They said there are no contracts, there are no nothing, Boo! which is the sort of fun things we need when there's no sports yet, right? So they redraft the entire NFL, and what I would like to do is analyze that situation a little bit and talk about how dumb a lot of people are. Uh, and also, we'll be doing an all-NFC East team when I'm done breaking this thing down. But So what they did was four rounds, right? They used the draft order from this year. And anybody who made trades, they undid the trades to keep the teams in order. And every team gets to pick four players, right? So, I want to take you through this and laugh at what some people did and celebrate what other people did, right? If you could have anybody in the NFL, and the goal is the next five years is all that exists, right? So, if you wanted to, you could take an older quarterback because the next five years, that's all that matters, right? So we get it on. Number one, the Bengals get Pat Mahomes, which you would think, oh, man, tough luck for the Bengals. But no, because we blew up the whole league. So right now he's the only player on any team. The Bengals are in great shape. Mahomes one, Russell Wilson two, Lamar Jackson three. No problem there at all. Deshaun Watson four, eh, maybe. Where we get to the problem is five, six, and seven. First four picks for quarterbacks. The fifth pick is Aaron Donald. I got no problem with him being the first non-quarterback off the board. The problem is that a non-quarterback came off the board in the top five. If you start with Aaron Donald and you don't get to pick another player for 32 picks, and then I pick behind you and I pick a quarterback and 32 picks later, I pick a different position, my team is better than your team. I'm going to beat the crap out of your team. Because I have a much better quarterback, and you let 32 picks go before you picked a quarterback. Your team is screwed, and my team is awesome. So, beat writer for the Miami Dolphins, whoever was drafted for this thing, bad pick. L.A. Chargers are next. Beat writer for the L.A. Chargers, whoever you are, you screwed this up. They take Ronnie Stanley, offensive tackle, great pass protector. Not a quarterback. Dumb pick. (laughs) Just a terrible pick. The real question is, how far should you go in this draft before a non-quarterback is taken? And maybe we'll do that in a second. Joey Bosa goes next to Carolina. Bad pick, because he doesn't play quarterback. At eight, Arizona gets Drew Brees, which is also a questionable pick, because the rules here are five-year window. Brees is going to give you, what, two of those? And then the next three, you'll be in the wilderness? But I guess if you're going for it, okay, you can take Brees. Dak Prescott goes next. To the Jacksonville Jaguars. So he is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth quarterback taken. And that is the same guy that a lot of you are trying to say not to pay. Uh, the guy that would be a top 10 pick in an overall NFL redraft. Just, yeah, just think about that a little bit, okay? So Dak goes nine. Nick Bosa goes 10, which is also stupid because he doesn't play quarterback. Then Carson Wentz, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow, Tom Brady, Drew Locke. Drew Locke before Matt Ryan. Drew Locke before Kyler Murray. Drew Locke before Tannehill and Darnold and Mayfield. I said Garoppolo, right? Bridgewater before Stafford. Drew Locke. Okay. So anyway, you can see the whole thing on ESPN.com. Drew Locke in the top 15. The real question is, how should this go? Mahomes, Wilson, Jackson. That's fine, right? Then the next picks should be a combination of Deshaun Watson, Drew Brees, Dak Prescott, Carson Wentz, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, Matt Stafford, 
maybe Brady. Did I say Ryan and Kyler Murray? Like if you wanted to pick Aaron Donald over Baker or Aaron Donald over Tannehill, you could make a case. Like, hey, you know, I'll figure out quarterback next time. And I'm not a I'm not sold on those guys. Okay. But my team's beating your team. If I have Ryan Tannehill and you wait and pick Jarrett Stidham and you have Jarrett Stidham and Aaron Donald, and I have Ryan Tannehill and Julio Jones, I just smoked you. Quarterback's the most important thing. When you rank top 100 players, when you rank top 50 players, if you want to sort them by how good they are at their job and you want to say Aaron Donald's the best player in the NFL, I'm cool with that. But once you put it into this form where you say, hey, this is a redraft, the top 10 picks are quarterbacks or you screwed it up. Now, the dude who screwed it up the most, and I think I need to get to a different page for this, but uh, the dude who screwed it up the most, I need to find the Chiefs Hall here because uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, okay. The Chiefs report are drafted. At the end of the first round, Stephon Gilmore. That's okay. You know, if you want to say at 32, I couldn't get a good quarterback, so I'm taking the best corner in the league at 32, okay. At 33, Dalvin Cook. Good running back. Don't use a top 33 pick in the entire NFL on a running back. Holy cow. Uh, And then the real treat here is in round three at 96. Chiefs reporter man picks Nick Chubb. Congrats. You have two running backs and no quarterback. And in the fourth round, they take Tyrod Taylor. So you're willingly taking a... I don't want to call Tyrod Taylor a bad quarterback, but he's he's a good backup and a guy that you probably don't want starting, which is why everywhere he ends up, they have a guy that's poised to take his job, like Justin Herbert right now. Cornerback, running back, running back, cor- or corner, running back, running back, quarterback. What are you doing? What are you doing? You should pick quarterback. Probably receiver, receiver, offensive tackle, but I think they made it so you had to pick a defensive player. So in your four rounds, the only way it should look is quarterback, wide receiver, and then if you want to go either pass rusher or corner, and then you should pick a tight end or another receiver. Or an elite offensive tackle. There's a few ways you can go, but none of those ways is corner, running back, running back, Tyrod Taylor. None of those is the proper direction. Check the whole thing out on ESPN.com. It's going to be great for talk radio purposes. Uh, Seven Cowboys were drafted, by the way. You can do quick math, right? It's a four-round draft. There's 32 teams, 128 picks. So, in theory, if all teams in the NFL were equal, all of them would have four players taken. Cowboys had seven players taken. And I believe at least one got snubbed. Dak goes number nine. Tyron Smith, 48. Zeke, 60. C.D. Lamb is their first receiver taken at 80, which I love. Amari Cooper, 87. Demarcus Lawrence, 102. Zach Martin, 118. It's too low for both of those guys. Lyle Collins did not get picked in a four-round draft starting from scratch. Lyle Collins is getting picked. Period. Point blank. End of story. Lyle Collins is getting picked. Uh, And you can make a good case that Michael Gallup should probably be picked. So the Cowboys, that's pretty good for your roster though, right? That seven of your players were picked, and I think they're all probably no doubters that they should have been, and they left off at least one that is deserving and maybe two that are deserving. You might have nine of the 128 first picks in an NFL redraft. That means you've got twice as many good players as what should be the league average. So that's pretty good. Okay, next thing I want to do. Mike M said, I'd be interested to see a best division all-star team comparison, which I don't have for you yet because that would take me a while. But what I did have time for this morning, my gum got moved around, is the NFC East version of that. You ready for your all NFC East uh, preseason team? A quarterback, who would you pick? Dwayne Haskins, Daniel Jones? Nah. So it's Carson Wentz or Dak? And I'll take Dak for one. I think that if you say they're both going to be healthy and just look at the way they've played, I think it's a really good competition in comparison. I'm going to lean Dak. 
it's hard to separate guys from their surroundings. Carson has played at an MVP level. Dak played at an MVP level for, what, about 10 weeks? So they both had really good runs, and then they both had times where you're like, hey, what's going on over there? But I'll take Dak for the 16 games that I think he'll play. So Dak is the All-NFC East quarterback. Running back, and this is going to go to what the most popular comment was on the last video, probably got about 10 different versions of it, is stop hating on Zeke. I'm not hating on Zeke. I hate on paying running backs, for sure. But Zeke, I think everybody else has to open their eyes to part of running back is breaking tackles and making big plays. And last year, he lost that ability. The fact that Tony Pollard on about a quarter of the carries had the same number of 20-plus yard runs, Zeke's got to get that back. Whether it was a Cabo thing, whether you want to blame Garrett, because the idea that all ran into stacked boxes, that don't hold up either. We can measure those. That ain't true. The box is not dictated by the running back. It's dictated by your formation. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I want to say Zeke was like 19th in stacked boxes. Like Derrick Henry was number one, and he got more yards per carry than Zeke because he broke big plays, because he broke tackles. Nick Chubb is out here breaking tackles. There's a lot of guys that are out there breaking tackles, making guys miss, and making big plays. Zeke needs to get back to that. And maybe with a whatever version of training camp they get without a holdout, maybe that comes back. But right now what Zeke is is a dude who gets a ton of carries and finishes runs. Good vision, good feel, finishes. You need juice. You need the juice. So I'm not hating on Zeke. I'm just telling you what he's got to get back to. Um, Saquon Barkley is my all-NFC East running back. Miles Sanders has a case. He had a great year last year. He did the things that Zeke struggled to do. Saquon does that too. Saquon's going to get you some big plays. Left tackle, Tyron Smith. All NFC East left guard. Here's the only time I'm going to cheat on this. There ain't a good left guard in the NFC East. So Brandon Brooks, the Eagles right guard, is my all NFC East left guard. Jason Kelsey, Eagles center is the All-NFC East center. Zach Martin is the All-NFC East right guard. Lyle Collins is the All-NFC East right tackle, but I'm also going to throw Lane Johnson in there and call it close enough to a tie that for tallying up at the end purposes, I'm going to give the Cowboys and the Eagles a point right there at right tackle. The tight end is Zach Ertz. Next, here is why the Cowboys... Yeah, I'm going to go with it. It's official. They're the favorite to win the NFC East, and it's because of this. I think the wide receivers for, on an all-NFC East team are Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and CeeDee Lamb. That's it. All three Cowboys receivers are the all-NFC East preseason team wide receivers. Other options, Terry McLaurin and Washington. You can make a case for it, for sure. C.D. Lamb hadn't done anything in the league yet. If you'd rather have McLaurin at this point, I won't kill you for it. The Giants, Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard. The Eagles are trying to run Alshon Jeffrey out of town. Deshaun Jackson's hurt all the time. They drafted Jalen Rager. But you take Lamb over Rager, right? I think all three receivers are Cowboys. Defense. One edge player is Tank Lawrence. One edge player is Chase Young from Washington. Defensive tackle, Javon Hargrave, new addition to the Philadelphia Eagles, is one of our D-tackles, and then Dalvin Tomlinson with the Giants is my other D-tackle. Um, their names may not be as popular to Cowboy fans, but Javon Hargrave is a really good player. He's probably a top 8 to 10 defensive tackle in the league, and Dalvin Tomlinson is a really good nose tackle. So, your defensive line is one from each team. Here at linebacker is where I found something interesting. I didn't think Jalen Smith would be a preseason All-NFC East linebacker until I looked at all the linebackers in the division. I think Jalen Smith's the one sure thing. He gets the first spot. Second spot, you're looking at Van Der Esch, if he's healthy, Blake Martinez with the Giants, Thomas Davis in Washington, Nathan Gary in Philadelphia, and a guy who didn't play much last year but played well that maybe a year from now will be a shoe in 
maybe TJ Edwards in Philadelphia. So I'm going Jalen Smith, and then I'm literally going to count everybody that I just named. Uh, so every team will get a point for the other linebacker. Thomas Davis, Blake Martinez, Nathan Gary, Leighton Van Der Esch, Everybody gets a point. Secondary. Darius Slay is one corner from Philly. Nickel Roby Coleman from Philly is another corner. And Kendall Fuller from Washington will be my three corners on the All-NFC East team. And that ain't a great group of corners, but you're okay there. Safety. Here's another surprising one. And maybe it's because he's my guy. But I wanted to check to see if I was cheating here, and I looked on Pro Football Focus to rank these safeties um, to see if I'm crazy. I put Xavier Woods and Landon Collins. Now, Pro Football Focus graded Landon Collins poorly last year. He wouldn't be on their team, but I put him there. Xavier Woods was the highest rated free safety, so I don't feel bad about it. Maybe Julian Love, who is a corner at Notre Dame but has been playing safety with the Giants, maybe he could take that spot a year from now. But for now, I think it's Xavier Woods and Landon Collins. And I think our linebackers and secondary in the NFC East ain't real good. Add them all up. What do you have? Three from Washington on the all NFC East preview team, preseason team. Four from the New York Giants. Seven from the Philadelphia Eagles. And 11 from the Dallas Cowboys. That is your preseason All-NFC East team. And it's not debatable. I hath spoken. All right, appreciate you guys. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube page and you got the notifications turned on, the little bell. Ding! Make sure you got that so you don't miss any videos. Leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. I need you for content. I need to give you guys something to watch. I know you need something to watch. I know you guys are just sitting there at the house, bored as hell. Leave something in the comments and I'll take care of you, all right? And uh, I will catch you guys here in just a bit on the radio.